Good day, everybody. I, first of all, I want to thank for your kind introduction and to thanks that I have the possibility to tell you a, a little bit about that, how analytical chemists can help pharmacologists, pharmacognosis, and so on. Yeah. Because we are working at that. That means we try to find methods how uh, just to analyze the extract, plant extract, and also uh, some eggs. The f first of all, I can say that it's not so easy, especially when we want to extract single compounds. So, therefore, we need uh, different sample preparation methods. We we need uh, to storage then then the analytes, identification, and determination. For the determination, we usually use high-performance liquid chromatography with different detectors, MS, UV, and so on. Gas chromatography, now mostly we use MS detector, and also capillary electrophoresis for, with using def different detectors. Of course, these methods we can use, especially gas chromatography, for some essential oils, because for essential oils, we can, we, without other methods, preparation method, we can use that, and you, uh, you can see here that how change the commercial lemon essential oils. Yeah? We never know what type of, of, of uh, oils we, we have, therefore we need analytical method just to show what is in this commercial else? Because when, when we, have, we don't have some compounds that didn't act at, at all, yeah? we buy it and it didn't act. So therefore, it's the method just to control the, the, the else and also for that, that uh, show what type of compounds in this case terpenes we have there and which type of these compounds can act in the organism. Some examples that we are uh, done here uh, just to determine the influence of chemical composition of commercial lemon essential oils on the growth of, can of candida strains. These oils are usually used in food past and such things. So therefore, it's impossible to, to know that. Yeah. The next example was to determine the and the chemical uh, composition of macerates and commercial essential oils on bacteria Escherichia coli. As you, as you can see here, it differs, depends on the, on the type of the, of the oils. And the next one that we also uh, work with two different lavender essential oils and uh, the, with, uh, with Big microbiologists, because we, we didn't do these biological experiments. What types of compounds we have, the monotherpenes, paints, uh, sex sexpital paints, and so on, and how it works, or how, if they act on uh, facial skin, uh, skin micro, mi microbiota. Of course, not in all cases it's so easy. Sometimes, here you can show the next one, analysis of phenolic compounds. In this case, we used HPLC for determine that. Phenolic compounds from algae extract. And you can see only HPLC is not enough with UV detector. Therefore, we used, because we had, in this case was two compounds that are going in the same time. Then we use for that the high-performance thin layer chromatography just to separate two compounds for that. Yeah? When it's not so easy, then we need sample preparation. Yeah? In many cases, for that we use liquid-liquid extraction, solid phase extraction, and membrane techniques. For liquid-liquid extraction, of course, the philosophy of green chemistry, also philosophy of green analytical chemistry, shows that we should use as small as is possible organic compounds, organic solids. For that, it could be this specific 
uh, liquid liquid extraction. Here you have the advantages and disadvantages. And for that we use, for example, extraction procedure for determine, uh, extract and then determine uh, some uh, compounds in Amanita mushrooms. We, we have a big project looking for hallucinogenic compounds in such mushrooms like Amanita and other. And you can see how is the limit of detection and limit of quantification for this type. And we, we used this elaborate methods for uh, to show the, um, the Amanita, the, the, the extract, how type of compounds we have in this extract, depending on the, on the solvent we used, we used for extraction. In, many, in some times it was more than around 2,000, 2000 microgram per uh, gram dry, of dry weight of Amanita musk. The next very interesting uh, method is single drop micro extraction. How it works? It was uh, in capillary electrophoresis, we have in fact one drop of, of, of extract. It was really one drop only. And we extract different compounds to this one drop. That means we have the nanoliters of organic of organic solvent. This method we use for, for determined muscimol and ibotenic acid and psilocin in using capillary electrophoresis. And you can see that we can do it for real samples. This is the limit of detection and limit of quantification in urine, because it's important when, when, when young people are using hallucinogenic compounds that we should have methods just to determine these compounds in urine. The next method is solid phase extraction. For that we use different type of, of uh, sorbents. As yours will not work consuming. Less volumes of organic solvents depend on the type it's milliliters of organic uh, uh, solvents, but uh, it is time consuming and have limited selectivity. For that we use, for example, ion, uh, ion exchange as uh, solid phase extraction for that and main glyphosate, that is pesticides and AMPA in uh, real water, that means in river water for that and main it. Also, this solid phase extraction we use, we use for determining the psilocin in urine. And you can see here that it's very easy to, to do it. And we elaborate and proposed method for, the, for, for determining these uh, compounds in urine and also in plasma samples just to, to have method for control these compounds in real human uh, fluids, body fluids. Very interesting is a specific type of polymer sorbents, like molecular imprinted polymers. He works like enzymes because they have a, a, specific, a specific place where single compounds can be sorbed or one type of compounds. Yeah. We uh, polymerized and we can synthesize such specific uh, sorbents for specific compounds or specific type of compounds. We use it for uh, determine phytoestrogens in a real sample, the urine. You can see the limit of detection is less than 0.1 in most cases. And also we used it uh, for extraction in urine using another type of where the uh, recovery is very good. Yeah. Isolation and purification can, for that can be used also membrane extraction. Membrane extraction is really an uh, extraction with re-extraction. I told more about that yesterday on my lecture here in the, at the university. Just we should have a driving force, then we 
we can have single diffusion. It's physical chemically uh, basic for that. Or carrier mediated transfer. We can use depend on the uh, type of uh, sample. When you have a bigger sample, milliliters or liters, we can use this one. Or when we have plasma samples or when we have extract of tissues, human tissues, then we use this small one, single hollow fiber where we need for that one milliliter of sample. On, inside we have, that, in, that means that we extract from one milliliter to three microliters. When the extraction is 90 or 100 percent, then we have 300 times higher concentration on the other side that we can go down with the limit of detection. This we used for uh, uh, antibiotics in surface water for determine antibiotics in surface waters. We use this also for uh, determine some acidic pharmaceuticals in surface water. And you can see that in some cases, depend of, of course on the pH, we had the uh, enrichment factors is 10,000. That means that that we can go down with the limit of detection for order of magnitude. That, that means that we can analyze the very low concentration. It's impossible to use to, to, to do it without such preparation methods. Uh, another, we also use this for uh, extract polyamines. We have a project that to, to when we, uh, in which we try to find markers, cancer markers. Cancer markers and polyamines was, was that, that we, first of all, we just elaborate the method, the analytical method. After that, we use the analytical method for extract in real samples. Yeah? Here in kidney homogonate, from urine samples, and as you can see, we publish it in applied cancer research and such. Last time, of course, in this case, we also use it for real from the pa patient. But we have too much uh, example. We have I don't know six or seven. But it's too much. That we still elaborate with the clinic uh, that we do another anal analysis for that. We also uh, use this method for extraction of peptides from plasma samples just to show because many, many, many drugs are small peptides, so therefore for the, it was for that. And the uh, last, I think, we used specific extraction, very selective because we have on the acceptor phase antibody. That means that we can, when we have monoclonal antibody, then we can extract or analyze, determine only one compound. When you have polyclonal, then we can uh, determine, depends on the antibody that we use, then we can analyze that, uh, or make the determination of class of compounds, depends on the, on the type of antibody. And you can see here the, the, how it's better than our method with Im immunoassay using standardly for, for such things. It's the limit of detection is two order of magnitude lower than for, you can see 16 and we can, now our limit of detection is 0.18 microgram uh, per liter. And also we used as uh, this uh, molecular imprinted polymers and as a, as a acceptor phase in typical uh, supported liquid membrane uh, extraction for from a, for extraction by biohanginstein diazein from urine samples. Sometimes we, we should make two methods, depends on the on the complication of the of the samples. That means preconcentration step and and uh, also uh, extraction. That then the real the 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 these compounds that we need to extract. And as you can see, we get in this case the uh, limit of detection. It was in this case 0.05 microgram per, per, per liter, while the maximum limit concentration of pesticide in this food samples is juice samples 
in the European Union was 0.1 microgram per milliliter, is two times lower. Thank you very much. This is my uh, group for professors, for assist, associate professors, and I don't know, 15 or 12 PhD students. Now, of course, it was impossible to, to do science without donations, so that's the many donations in the European Union and, and Polish uh, National uh, Foundation, uh, Science Foundation. And at last, thank you for your attention. I hope that I...